most beautiful friends and astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace, and I am here to talk about what is happening in our weekly horoscope next week, beginning March 16th, but I'm actually going to back it up just a little bit, and we're going to discuss from the 13th all the way through the 22nd, and I decided to do that this week this way because we've got so much stuff going on in the world around the coronavirus and the astrology and how that is shifting us economically, politically, socially, all of that good stuff. So I thought, let's back up just a little bit. We're going to bring these two weeks together so we can maybe see a pathway through and exactly what we're doing in the energies as well. So starting here on Friday the 13th, so you are watching this, I'm recording this Friday the 13th. Hopefully you're having a beautiful day and you don't have too much um, inner negative mystery happening around that. It's actually a beautifully magical sacred day. So I hope you're taking beautiful advantage of it. Not to mention as the moon is continuing to transit through the energy of Scorpio today, it's had the opportunity to make different connections with Mars, Neptune, Jupiter. Then we've got some Sun Pluto action happening as well. And all of these energies as they're coming together and they're harmonizing and working together, what we see is an opportunity to bring strategy, to bring logical thinking to, which is interesting, right? Because in the energy of Scorpio, that moon, we've got to get past our own internal emotional fears, our bias, our suspicions, our jealousies of other people. And instead, we've got to have this different emotional response that is based in a little bit more factual information, structured information. What is it going to take for us to move past this pandemic that seems to be out there and is causing a little bit of chaos, some of which is mostly just caused from lack of information, right, being fully informed, or... It's being caused by the fact that this has caused our systems, our structures, our shopping, our economies to be different. So one of the things that I want to tell you before we get to tomorrow where we will see Mars and Neptune in a really nice sextile, which is actually very, very useful, especially useful in terms of this virus. One of the things I want you to consider or maybe just just I offer it for your consideration before you go to the suspicious place with that Scorpio moon and start to believe that your fellow humans are somehow suspicious or there's something going on, right? One of the things I would encourage you to be mindful of is as these schools are closing, as these churches and these businesses are closing, that that too will bring effects from this coronavirus as well. People are buying up just all the toilet paper. People are buying up the cereal and the ramen and all of these things. And not all of it is in this prepper mind frame that has to do with being in a panic. We've got a whole bunch of children that are going to be at home now when many of them maybe have one or two meals a day at the schooling or at the institutions that they're at. The institutions that do have children who are still going to be open have had to stock up on extra food to feed these people. Many people are going to now be working from home and that will require extra resources and things like that. So before you think everybody's just gone crazy and your fellow humans are just terrible and fear-based, some of it is actually because it just makes sense based on the changes that are happening out in our social world, which will also obviously put pressure on our economy. Now, Back at the beginning of the year, many of the astrologers, you've heard us talking about how the Saturn energy and the changes that are coming are really going to have an impact on 2021, which is why I'm extraordinarily excited to talk about 2021. But as we are here and now, keep in mind that many of these things we're going to be moving through, especially in this next couple months, starting right now, require a fair amount of integrity. And so practice your integrity when you're out there. See how you can lend your hand and be of service to your fellow man and Instead of just thinking they're terrible as well it is not the time to pull the fear card right what we know of the virus that is happening Gary Caton talks a lot about it and he did the astrology on it it's beautiful check it out on my Facebook if you haven't had the chance to follow but what we do know is that simple biology some people will die based on this virus and that is just simple biology that is not terrible thinking or wishful thinking on anyone's part it is just biology and people 
in general die when it is their time to die. As well, we know that there are many people who are living and surviving the virus, just like when they the flu came around, the Black Plague came around, all of these things. We did find a way through it, but we had to economically, politically, and socially pull together in order to do that and to in order to understand what we were dealing with. So keep in mind, all is not for naught. Panic will get us nowhere. Big voices resources and solutions are the things that are going to be most helpful. Now, I think we get to see some of this energy based on being more informed, based on being willing to not add to the chaos, Turn the corner a little bit tomorrow on Saturday the 14th, which I, I have to tell you guys, I have been having dreams about this day. This day has been on my mind and on my heart, and I still haven't quite put my finger on exactly what it is about this day. But the astrology of the day is that Mars and Neptune are going to come into a sextile in the morning part of the day. Mars is over in the energy, like pushing us forward, structure, we're still doing good things, we're still moving in the energy of Capricorn. Neptune is over here in the energy of Pisces, right? So as we put, if you think about the Capricorn Pisces compatibility and you put these two together and these energies, how they work together, it's the best of both worlds. It's action and a plan and a strategy and some kind of structure meets the intuition, meets the compassion. This is what helps you drop your shoulders down, realize that you are in it with your entire human species. We are all in this boat together. It also allows us to take acts of compassion as well. It allows us to take intelligent acts of strategy or moving forward. I think you get to feel more empowered if you surrender to the fact that we are all in this together and some more a little bit more surrendered to the fact that if we all pull together, there's a lot more resourcefulness available to each of us based on the plan and the strategy and the information we're gathering in these days priors. Now, all of these are right on time. All of these movements are on time, okay? On Sunday, we're going to see the moon move out of the energy of Scorpio. So some of the depth, some of the fear, some of the intensity will turn down a little bit. And we see it move into the energy of Sagittarius. Now remember, Sagittarius wants to gather information. It wants to share information. And it is a completely optimistic energy, right? Sagittarian energy, and this is in our moon right now, right? So in our emotions, the Sagittarian energy is going to say, now wait a minute, we did need to have a little bit of a freak out, right? Just like the arch does. We needed to pull back a little bit so that we have a safe path to launch as far forward as we can in humanity. Now, this is not just a woo-woo thought that I'm giving you about humanity. Saturn is getting ready to leave the energy of Capricorn and move into the energy of, Qu of Aquarius. As a human species, we are going to need to work together, and it is going to take each of us using our individual peace, our individual integrity, our individual voice to add to the whole so that we can change and move forward. So the Sagittarian moon that rolls in on Sunday, welcome it in. Welcome new information. Welcome shedding what you thought was happening and replace it with better useful information and replace it with you. Where can you put yourself out there and be generous and be optimistic and be informed? It's a beautiful energy where we can see that really we don't have to have panic. We can all actually come together and share the resource of information and food and things like that. Now, as we do roll into the beginning of the week on the 16th, this is just a busy week. It is a busy week up in the heavens, but everything has its purpose, okay? So right at the beginning of the week on the 16th, we're going to see Mercury, who has retrograded, been in the energy of Aquarius, been in the energy of Pisces, went back to the energy of Aquarius. And if you haven't had the chance to check out the video that I did with Gary Caton, please check that out. It is on the YouTube channel. Wonderful explanation of what's happening and how to travel forward with it. But on the 16th, Mercury is again going to resume full forward motion by leaving the energy of Aquarius. In the energy of Aquarius, we've been more group-minded, tech-minded, socially-minded, right? There's been a lot of hyper-thinking, hyper-speaking, hyper-communicating that's been happening. Now, on the 16th, Mercury is going to move back into the energy of Pisces, and it's going to be in this energy until the middle of April. So Mercury in this emotional placement, which he's still in fall in this energy, 
this is a source that we know has created a little bit of confusion in information, right? Mercury is not at his peak. He is not at his strongest here. Typically, when a planet is sitting in fall, it means it just doesn't have its full expression. It is the weakest point that it has. So this has made things even more confusing with it basically being here for about two months total as we walk through this Pisces energy. So... Take a deep breath. We're going back into the energy of Pisces because what it will help us do is to intuitively connect to the emotional intelligence, intuitively connect to the intuition. This is also going to be an energy that I think is very, very important this week because as the coronavirus is happening, Mercury, while he is not in full power, he is still a nosy little something. So we will begin to gain information about the disease, about changes we need to be making um, for people, institutions that are, or places that have solitude or people that have solitude. And we will have to lead that way with information plus compassion, right? What are we going to do for, um, our people who are maybe elderly or our children who are not able to get food or, you know, um, one of the other things that comes up a lot for me, especially as I look around the area here in Colorado, is for our people who are involved in recovery programs. They typically meet in the basement of churches or things like that, and these churches are closed. Where are our people going for recovery? Mercury and Pisces is actually helpful here because through the lens of compassion and treatment, everybody will be resourceful enough to help each other out if we live and practice that integrity, okay? Now, also this week, we have got the sun moving into the energy of Aries, so bringing on our spring equinox, right? The sun is light, heat, life, and vitality. So this is movement. Now we're ready to move forward. This is a move forward with new strategy, new compassion kind of week, right? So on the 19th, 20th, just depending on where you live, we're going to see the sun step into the energy of Aries. This also brings a rekindling of our fire, our inner war. Warriors, right? So look at where your Aries energy is at in your chart. This is where you have the chance to shine right now. You are motivated to take action and to take initiation and be this fire energy, right? In the things that are coming your way, especially because this marks the beginning of spring. This is when we're going to have balanced light and darkness. And I think as we watch the um, choices with the coronavirus and the things that are happening in the stock market right now, we've got to have some light and dark to make things move forward to see where we need to come out of hiding and shine more light, light in order to move um, forward. But one of the things I encourage whenever we get to an equinox point is because this is the energy of Aries, of course, you want to look at you. Where do you have balance or where are you sensing imbalance in your warrior energy? Where is it time for you to step forward and come out of your own darkness and your own hiding in order to move something that needs to be moved forward, forward, okay? Other things that we've got happening this week is not to mention we've got some conjunctions happening this week and we've got Saturn moving on. So Saturn is going to move on on the 21st into the energy of Aquarius. Now Saturn has been in the energy of Capricorn where it's been traditional. There's a lot of concrete structure that's been happening. And now on the 21st, he's going to shift into this high flying air energy of Aquarius. Okay. So now remember Aquarius. Aquarius is, first of all, a very forward and future moving kind of energy. We innovate with the energy of Uranus and Aquarius in the characteristics, right? We innovate. We say, okay, this has worked for a very long time. Now this won't work anymore. On a global scale, because Saturn is considered one of our outer energies, we will see this happen in our economy, our politics, our social lives that are happening out there. But for you personally as well, where are you ready to break free of some things that were traditional? Where are you ready to break free of some ideas or maybe some fears that you thought, whether that be personal or out in the bigger global world for you as well? Now, this is going to be a particularly important time with Saturn moving into the energy of Aquarius for the people who were born in about, um, what is this? So this is 20 or 30 
1990 to 1992, right about in there, you should be experiencing your very first Saturn return. So to you, it has probably felt like a very stressful one to two years. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Everything you've been doing feels like it doesn't fit. How come I've been doing these things for a long time and they don't work anymore, right? It has been a time of stretching and of growth for you. So as you are coming here into your Saturn return time, I just want to say welcome. What you are doing is reaching what I call the age of spiritual maturity, which means you are now officially an adult. So welcome. The first couple years after your Saturn return can be informative and a little bit confusing. So if you're feeling off your reels, it's okay. Get a reading, sit down, get a little bit of guidance, do your research, do whatever it is that you need to do. But this is important because this is, again, with Saturn coming into the energy of Aquarius, it is a joining. You join us. Your independent voices will join us who have already moved there as well. And we will begin to take care of humanity with your voice and your spiritual awakening on our table, creating abundance for all of us. So it is a very big time for you guys. And I'd like to say welcome. Now, some of you may also be experiencing your second at Saturn return, which you're 59 and a half to 60, and you are going to be starting a completely new chapter in your life, and some of it may look completely different than it did before for you as well. I say if you need guidance, please reach out to one of your astrologers, a counselor, whoever you trust to help you walk forward so that we can see how this next chapter is going to unfold for you and how you can use your timing the best, okay? Now, Saturn is going to be here in the energy of Aquarius until July, and then he's going to retrograde back and travel and through the energy of Capricorn and then we'll see him come back for a longer stay in the energy of Aquarius in December. So we will also but see Mars coming into a once a year conjunction um, with Jupiter and this is going to happen on Friday the 20th. So this is actually, I love this energy. This is the energy if you watched your monthly report for March, this is where I'm telling you go do it. This is courage meets initiation meets take action. This is an action where you can start something new if you would like to. This is an, an energy where Jupiter is our largest planet out there. So think big. Don't think small. Think about the systems in which you live and you work and the systems in which you would like to impact with your world and then go. Go do it. Go go present it. Go start something. Go bring your initiation to the table, okay? Now, the other conjunction that we're going to have going is going to happen on Sunday the 22nd because we're going to see Mars and Pluto come into a conjunction with each other. Now, this energy tends to be a little bit tense. This can be tense. It can be intense. They are both in the energy of Capricorn. And so what this can create here is some level of a power struggle. Now, Pluto too is an outer planet. It's our smallest outer planet as a matter of fact. So we could see a power struggle in the global arena as well. Certainly in the arena of our authority figures, or I think this has a lot to do with our economy as well. But this is an energy that we are cautious of in astrology because of the influence of potential accident or violence. But this is definitely an energy of, of power struggle. Okay, so whatever is happening at this time, know that you can have a power struggle, whether it's internal or external, but reground yourself into this idea of how can you be of service this week or how can you leave the power struggle? right? Where can you compromise? Where does something need to be put down so that the power struggle can be released? This is definitely a big energy um, happening this week. Now, as we begin to move in this next couple weeks, Mars is actually going to move on, come out of the energy of Capricorn and move into the energy of Aquarius where it will join up a little bit with Saturn, but we are not there yet. So let's just take it one week at a time <laughs> and we will get through it together, okay? Combine your humanity, your compassion, your intellect, and the being informed is the biggest thing. You can, no matter if you live in a small community, a big one, you have a big voice, you have a small voice, you can be a producer of chaos if you would like to be, or you can be a producer that says in the mid of everything that's happening, let's look why it's happening because that will inform us and help us soften some of the edges of ourselves with love to our fellow human beings while also being warrior enough and ferocious enough this week to take the actions that we do need to take to move forward, not even on the global stage, but also on the personal one, okay? All right, you guys, 
I love you so much and I know that this week's video was a little bit longer than normal and I haven't made a video specifically on the coronavirus and I just haven't decided if I'm going to or not. But I would like to bring some perspective to the table about how we can use that in the weekly form. This is nothing surprising. Saturn making its way into the energy of Aquarius. So much Mercury in Aquarius energy has been pushing us into these places where we were going to come into some form of isolation where we would need to regroup together and figure out in a very togetherness kind of way how we were going to get things done. It is no surprise this week as Saturn moves into the energy of Aquarius that our educational institutions are also having to move to a more tech space. And we've talked about that several times, including we touched on it in the video where Uranus is going into Taurus. So we've seen these symbols coming all along, there is no real shock happening here, but it is as the impacts of these things are playing out, how do we walk? And then what big choices are we going to make as we get towards 2021? So I do believe like many astrologers and medical professionals that there is some let up that will begin to come with the coronavirus. I do believe personally um, that there will be a second wave of it and it will be a little bit more intense than this wave. But once we have figured out a strategy on how we will move this forward, we will be in a much better position to treat and to understand this virus. So lots going on this week. I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Please let me know how things are going in your area. I know here in Colorado, churches, um, schools, all sorts of things have been shut down and they are moving to that online space, online education. So let me know what's happening in your areas down below. I'm sending you lots of light, lots of love, and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.